so welcome to to the channel thanks for getting time to pass by it's a good thing it's a good thing we we appreciate so today i'm going to do a review of a book that i love reading it's called the power of the subconscious mind it's a book that was written by joseph murphy and it was published in 1963 where were you? Where were you in 1963? Let me know if you are still existing then. Let me know if you are clothing and if you are not born like some of us, just let me know. So Joseph Murphy did a degree in chemistry and then he did it in Ireland and then he transferred from Ireland and he moved to the US. He worked as a pharmacist in New York. Joseph was born a Catholic and then he transitioned to the Pentecostal faith where he joined the Divine Science Church. You know, he was just about to become a father. The parents had invested a lot in him. They expected him to become a Catholic father. <laughs> but imagine he disappointed them. Eh? So uh, in one interview when Joseph Murphy was asked, why did you change your faith? He responded and he said that the Catholic Church did not allow him to, to put out the spirituality in him. And that's why he, was, he didn't believe in anything to do with religion for quite some time. Then later, as I mentioned, he went and founded the Divine Science Church and he also founded the Religious Science Church. So why do I like reading this book? I was introduced to this book when I was quite small. I was young. I was in class six, yeah. Class six, I was uh, quite young. I was preparing for my KCPE. And you know, I'm a Kenyan. And in Kenya, the KCPE or KCSE or the national exams are a do or die thing if you don't come from a rich family. By a rich family, I mean a family with heavy, heavy financial muscles that they can take you abroad after you're from four or they can start a mega, mega business, you know, if you don't make it in exam. So I was in that category where I needed the good grades more than anything else. And that's when I started reading my dad's books. My dad has a big, big library. He has so many books. So, so many books. I'm slowly building up my own. Uh, but like I can tell you, I really don't think I'll ever get to what my dad has. So I used to read those books when I was quite small. The Power of the Subconscious Mind has got more than 20 chapters. And in this book, he's discussing the difference between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. And he says that it is the subconscious mind that drives our actions. Whatever you are manifesting as a person today, the author suggests that it started in your subconscious mind. For example, he shows how a student will pass exams or fail based on the information that is stored in the subconscious mind. If a student believes that they are going to pass in their subconscious mind, this is going to influence their actions when they are conscious and their actions are going to influence the outcome in the end if it is about money you will get money based on what you believe in your subconscious mind if you believe you deserve to be wealthy if you believe you deserve to have a good home if you believe you need to travel to different destinations of the world this is going to be stored in your conscious mind, in your subconscious. And now your subconscious mind is going to influence the actions that you take during your waking hours or when you can really, really influence the outcome. So he addresses the power of the subconscious mind in making you happy or unhappy, in keeping you rich or poor, in making you a successful student or a failure, the power of the subconscious mind in your health, he also addresses the power of the subconscious mind in your relationships and also the power of the subconscious mind in the general life that you're going to live as a person. 
So how, how do we shape our subconscious? The author says that the information we store on our subconscious is based on our words, our actions, and our attitudes when you are conscious. Like now I'm talking, I'm using my conscious mind. When you're walking, you're using your conscious mind. When you're cooking, you're using your conscious mind. It is the words that you speak, the actions that you take, or the attitude you have when you're conscious, when you are aware of what you're doing, that gets stored in the subconscious mind. So in this example, he's telling us about the language you use. If you use a positive language, if you use positive remarks when anything happens you're feeding your subconscious with positivity and this is positivity is what is going to be reflected in your actions on the contrary when you feed your subconscious with negativity negative words negative remarks this is what is going to be fed into your subconscious and then your subconscious is going to show in your actions because your actions will also have negativity or lack of energy lack of drive and your outcome will show so for us to feed our subconscious so that it's a powerhouse that drives our actions we need to speak positive words it's also talking about the power of imagination like when you are sick you imagine yourself health holy okay not in problems that's how you feed your subconscious. He's also talking about the power of meditation, using meditation to feed our subconscious mind, which influences what we believe and what we work out for. That is a book. I will encourage you to read that book. I picked that book because there's, there's, there's something I'm working on at the moment, and it seemed like a huge goal. And I decided to look for that book like for motivation, yeah? You can actually use this book for motivation or you can use it as a self-help group, a book. What do I mean by motivation? I needed some motivation in whatever I'm working on. It's something I've never done in my life. And I needed some boost, yeah? Like to believe I can do it and do something worth, worth the time and the effort. You can also use the book as a self-help book, like when you are really down, yeah? You know, most of the times when you are too stressed, emotionally down, depressed or what have you, you if you do a self-evaluation, you will notice that you are the obstacle to your own success. You are the obstacle to your own progress. So you can use this book when you are down and when you need that extra boost, yeah? It's a good book. On a scale of 10, I give it a very high score. I give it a very high score. I would encourage you to read it. And tell me what you like about the book. I've told you I've been using it since I was small and I always get that shot that I need. Uh, what do I need think should have been improved in the book? Joseph Murphy, as I mentioned, is a pastor. And there's a lot, a lot of reference to the Bible. When you start reading the book, you start quoting the Bible from chapter 1 to almost the last chapter. Which can make one question the motive of the author. Was it to influence masses into taking up Christianity or was the book a communication of what he believes in that can help the general population? Uh, that is something I felt when I was reading the book. I felt like even though he's a pastor writing a book, knowing that it is for the general audience, which is what is written in the preface, I, I would wish he, he reduced a lot of quotations and a lot of references to the Bible. The other issue I had with the book is that there are a lot of scientific claims without any reference, yeah? So like he talks of someone who got healed of cancer without going for chemo or for medical attention by just having that positivity and putting healing in their subconscious mind. I have a scientific background. Someone like me, if you claim anything scientific, you need facts. I, I, may, I don't want to believe it, but I, I know I can use my subconscious mind to create my realities. This is something I've been doing over and over. But I would have loved to see Joseph Murphy give us some facts. Yeah? 
just some scientific facts how it is happening um that's just me that's what I, the issue i had with the book but it's a good one i've been reading i continue reading this is one of the books that my children will have to read because i want them to know that they are the masters of their own destiny that they can create their own realities using their own minds and i want my daughters to know that the mind is a powerhouse the mind is where you set your limits and your limits become your realities and I would love to know, you know, get the book, read the book. Let me know your opinion. Let me know, did it help you? Did it, did, you know, how would you feel about the other? Can you recommend? And what score do you give the book on a scale of 1 to 10? Let me know. That is it for now. Have a good one.